good morning everyone um, i would like to uh, thank the organizing uh, committee for giving me an opportunity to present my paper today my paper is on uh, novel concept of uh, repeat antagonist post uh, hcg trigger to prevent premature luteinization uh, we all know that premature luteinization is uh, seen in um, uh, routine practice in every uh, clinician's um, uh, career. Premature luteinization definition per se is uh, it refers to a rise in serum uh, progesterone levels on the day of uh, HCG administration. The serum progesterone levels of about 0.8 to 2 nanogram per uh, ml. This suggests that an excessive amount of uh, progesterone is uh, being produced by these granulosa cells that have already started the process of luteinization. So what the definition does not describe is obtaining atreticocytes or uh, empty cumulus, a significant drop in the E2 level before the oocyte retrieval and not obtaining the ex expected number of oocytes due to premature rupture of the follicles. A scientific hypothesis behind my study is in spite of prompt administration of this uh, antagonist, every clinician would have experienced premature luteinization before egg pickup in a few antagonist cycles. The reason for this could be a shorter half-life of the antagonist and doubtful quality of the antagonist which leads to the endogenous LH surge. So then this novel concept of repeating this antagonist could help to prevent this premature uh, luteinization, um, premature endogenous surge of LH by adding to the half-life of the antagonist and if the antagonist is of a doubtful uh, quality and of low efficiency. The, uh, objectives, our primary objective is uh, are we able to prevent this uh, premature luteinization by repeating the dose of ANTAC 24 hours prior to oocyte retrieval. So secondary objective is if what is the alarming level of LH and P4 at which this premature luteinization can be expected and which cases are helped by giving this repeat dose and which cases are not. So materials and methods, it is a descriptive study which was done from January 2015 till September 2016. 380 patients were enrolled in this GNRH antagonist cycle which are characterized into two groups that is where the antagonist was given and where it was not given. So the gonadotrophin dose, the daily dose, was dependent about, uh, or dependent on the AMH, age, AFC, and the BMI. So accordingly, 150 to uh, 450 international units daily was given. So USA retrieval was done 35 hours prior, I mean 35 hours after the HCG trigger. And out of these 380 patients, repeat antag was given to three, uh, 200 cases, and repeat antag was not administered in 180 cases. My inclusion criteria was that I took all uh, antagonist cycles. And exclusion criteria was agonist cycles and where antagonist cycle, where the agonist trigger was given in antagonist cycle. So the criteria for premature luteinization in my study was uh, we had grouped uh, the progesterone levels less than 1.2 and greater than 1.2 on the day of uh, uh, trigger. So E2 drop was predicted, uh, predictive of the premature luteinization which was determined by the above criteria as uh, determined by ROC analysis. All this was analyzed uh, based on the SPSS software version 16 and uh, E2 drop, uh, drop of about cutoff was taken to be more than or equal to 58% which was used to categorize patients with PML. Reduced uh, number of expected oocytes. So this was my methodology, two groups which I have already explained. This repeated, uh, repeat antag was given and repeat antag was not given. Uh, where premature luteinization was anticipated and no premature luteinization was anticipated in the repeat antag group. And where it was not given, uh, premature luteinization anticipated and not anticipated. These were the respective levels of the E2, LH and P4 on the day of trigger. This is a graphical representation of age, AFC, AM, AMH, peak E2, LH and P4. So the first uh, one shows the age, then the next one is the AFC, AMH, the last three are E2, LH and P4. So whatever I have marked in flower brackets, it means that they were statistically significant. This is with the follicles and the oocytes. So my discussion is there's an increasing trend in the P4 which is seen across groups, highest being in group 4, there is a high risk category where we had expected a clinical suspicion of PML with a mean P4 of about 2.06 and lowest in group 1 which was considered low risk category with no clinical suspicion, uh, suspicion of PML with a mean P4 of 0.92. So high risk category obviously had higher levels of E2 and uh, they had the higher, highest number of follicles. So however when we compare the oocyte yield it was comparable with group 3 that is a clinical anticipation of PML where the P4 value was uh, less than 1.4 which explains that premature luteinization could not be prevented at this level. And uh, further on, when we compare LH values in group 2 and group 3, even though LH and P4 values were higher in group 3, group 3, PML could be prevented. So as a conclusion, the, it is a novel, novel concept of repeating antagonist is, 
is a new ray of hope in preventing premature luteinization in high risk cases and optimizing the IVF outcomes. Thank you. Hi, before I go to the remarks, can you go back to the results for a minute? Because you just saw the graphs and you kept on going and so, no. yes, we don't, we don't, we didn't get the result actually. You have enough time, you rushed yes. in. <laughs> so, in this uh, graphical representation, it is, uh, it is uh, plotted via the uh, SPSS software of uh, version 16. The first uh, graph shows uh, age. So, we have found that the age is in the higher, uh, I mean, uh, seems to be higher in the pre repeat antic and where we expected the PML. And in uh, AFC group, we see that this is group 1, group 2, group 3 and group 4. So between the group 2 and group 3 in the, the first flower bracket, what I'm saying. And uh, the second one is between the group 2 and group 4. And the last one is between the group 1 and group 4. On this, sir. And uh, group two and uh, group three, group two and group four. It's not coming. It's not coming. Ah. Where is the progesterone uh, presented? Progesterone is presented here, sir. So what, what did you find here? We found that in the, as I explained in the group 4, sir, where repeat antac was given and premature luteinization has happened. So the P, uh, progesterone value was about uh, 2.06 in the group 4, which happens to be the high risk category for uh, premature luteinization. That this graph I had shown, sir. This one. The premature luteinization in group 4, sir, that was 2.06 and had, had a highest E2 of uh, highest value among all the four groups is 3,528. Which was given in where the group which had been given the antac had a higher value because we actually expected premature luteinization to happen and hence we have given the repeat antac. Whereas in this last group, sir, the, uh, the no, uh, not given the repeat antac and where we didn't expect a premature luteinization to happen, the P4 was only 0 0.92. So this happens to be the lowest, low risk category. That is group 1 and group 4 is the high risk category. Yes, yes, that was the, that was the criteria that we gave a repeat antac when the P4 was more than 1.2 in okay. my study. At the time of the trigger. At the time of the trigger. Okay. And we repeated the peak, uh, we repeated the pre-E2 values before the pickup. Means we have given the trigger, sir, after doing the peak E2 LHP4, we've given the trigger. And like on the day of the pickup, we've done a pre-E2 value yes. and calculated the difference. So after calculating the difference uh, by plot, plotting the ROC curve, there we have uh, found that uh, E2 drop of more than or equal to 58 percent, we have anticipated premature luteinization. And it was yes. statistically significant. So yes. you are telling us that in that particular group 4, where you have a P4 of 0 0.06, the even though you expected premature luteinization, by giving the second antag, hmm. you were able to prevent yeah, it. Yeah. So such a high risk population is the group that you would like a repeat antag, antag to, to be, be given. given. Okay. Oh, fine. That's good. I have another question. Yeah, yeah, please. Hi, Dr. Um, it's an interesting uh, presentation, but I would like to know, like uh, you're talking about giving a repeat antag if there is already a premature luteinization. That means your progesterone has already risen. So your only way, uh, I mean, the only reason why you're giving a repeat antag here is only to prevent premature rupture, is it? Because already the premature luteinization is happening. Ha yeah, the process Whatever of premature... The effect of the progesterone, high progesterone on the endometrium or on the oocyte quality has already occurred. It's a bad cycle in the sense there has been a poor control on the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what is the whole concept of repeat in an antag after the trigger? Is this um, is the, is the reason only to prevent an unexpected rupture prior to 35 hours or anything else? 
Uh, yes, ma'am. It is that only. Actually, the basic study is about preventing the uh, premature luteinization in uh, these patients. But luteinization the has already occurred. The process of uh, like luteinization occurs. Yeah, I, the, the just to throw a little bit uh, light on this. Yes, as you rightly said, Dr. Pani, when the uh, premature luteinization, when we actually describe, it is basically on the progesterons as of now. Mm -hmm. The definitions are basically depending on the progesterons. But what we also see is the expected number of follicles may not come, but that is probably that could lead to rupture also. So that is what is uh, prevented by repeating the antagonist in uh, uh, group 3, as you can see. Then uh, the number of cases that actually rupture in spite of the progesterone being high on the day of the trigger it are relatively not. very less, right? And uh, the main uh, problem with the premature luteinization is the effect on the endometrium or on the oocyte quality, as we all know. And the other thing, have you ever compared uh, the results of number of mature oocytes after having given a repeat uh. antag versus not having given a repeat antag because uh, you are again interfering in the process of maturation? The scientific hypothesis behind this is we may not probably interfere with the uh, you know, uh, maturation because we are giving the HCG that is the surrogate of LH, LH. which actually is important in uh, causing uh, L2, I mean the, the M1 converts, uh, I mean the G conversion to M2. Mm -hmm. But what we are actually giving, uh, the purpose of giving repeat antagonist is to, premature, to prevent premature endogenous LH surge. HCG is there already to cause that maturation. But the endogenous LH may actually result in premature rupture of the follicles, which may not be actually, you know, uh, which has a uh, um, conflict between the timings. So, repeat antagonist is mainly for preventing the endogenous yes, LH search. That is the concept or the scientific hypothesis behind this. Would have really been interesting if we had known uh, the maturation uh, percentage in the category of repeat antagonist versus uh, no repeat antagonist. I guess you know that would have been of yeah that could have been of great value yeah. to even people who have thought of using it because uh, then it's going to be more clear. See, funny in uh, many probably, cases. So probably she'll do it as an ongoing study. It's an ongoing yeah. study, so she'll extend it and uh, she will present it in the next year. I think the point over here was premature luteinization mm -hmm. and I agree with the, because the objective of the study was luteinization. What you are asking for me is totally different. Yeah. The objective is luteinization and I have seen even with the P4 of 2.06, the luteinization is not complete. So when you have large, when you have an E2 of 3528, you know that you would be having a fair number of <coughs> follicles, almost 12 to 14 you know, M2 fo uh, follicles over there, M2 oocytes there. What, yes, the second part of this study, which is what I would agree, is to look at uh, these kind of, the same, what was the retrieval from group 4 vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis retrieval from group 1. Is depicted? Uh, as we are running Yes, you had one thing on the follicles version, right? Yeah, what? What was the graphs? I mean, were you able to uh, find out that the number of follicles, the amount of M2 that you got between uh, the uh, first group to the fourth group? Vivishri, you were part of this. Vivishri, you were part of this. Group 4 was supposed to be high. See, number of follicles, if you can uh, see in. Uh, the the last group that is the where the premature luteinization happened in spite of repeating the antagonist and the premature luteinization which didn't happen uh, because of uh, repeat antagonist the number of follicles were actually higher in the last group but when we compare the oocytes it's almost equal why is it probably because even in those high risk cases where the progesterone was already had crossed two in spite of repeating antagonist it has not helped so that the oocyte numbers are almost equal compared to group three and four the last two. Yeah. yeah. If you see the follicles are comparatively much higher and it is statistically significant. But it, when it comes to oocytes, it is almost the same. So in that particular group, when we repeated the antagonist, it has helped. In the yield of oocytes have been equal. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I have one more question. Did you look at the LH uh, during the time? Because uh, sometimes you can repeat, I maybe that wasn't the aim of this study, but uh, sometimes when you stimulate, you can see that the LH is slightly rising, and then we add another, um, 
another antagonist before this time, so we can prevent those patients of getting here. Yes. Flow chart as well. Yeah, Go to that flow chart. chart. This one. Yeah. See, if you see in group three, where the where yeah, so the LHE was three yes. and three point nine. Mm -hmm. Didn't yes. you see it before? Couldn't you depict it before and, and give an extra cetratide before that? I didn't the get the point. The, the antagonist. The antagonist was already there, but we have uh, chosen to repeat the antagonist in this group. No, no, I, I understand. S sometimes we give twice, or at least that's in, in my practice, we will give another dose. An added dose, yes. Yes, just there and because we, we could yes, figure out exactly, that it's going exactly. there. Exactly. So we are trying to prolong the half life of antagonist either by increasing the dosage or repeating the dosage. So that is the whole, uh, you know, hypothesis. I'm so this. sorry, I have to interrupt. We are yeah. running short of time. To conclude, a repeat antagonist is in repeat antagonist cycles. It's better to freeze all the embryos as it might have a mm. detrimental effect on the endometrial yeah. receptivity. It is okay. not for the implantation. It is only for the oocyte. Yes, yes. Uh, we now move. On. Thank you, Vaishnavi. Thank you.